Well, since the null backyard I'm usually shooting at is now spontaneously unavailable, I'm gonna have to... Uh, I'm gonna have to improvise. Because tomorrow night is gonna be... should be... is supposed to be clear. And... I need to prepare in order to shoot anything good, so... Let's do that. Welcome to our garden. Was that good? I hope so. The thing I love about this hobby, I'm just carrying all these different parts. Some of them heavy, some of them small, some of them big. But when I put them together, each and every single one has its own purpose, but together they will work as one gigantic camera, one gigantic machine. And that's why I love it. Why do I need to prepare myself? It's supposed to be clear tomorrow, tomorrow night. And in case you didn't know, I'm also a trainer, I'm a table tennis trainer and the training goes until the evening. And if I hadn't packed all the stuff in here already now, I, I would be way too late tomorrow, so better be prepared to get good images. Let's hope the forecast for tomorrow holds its promise. Time to get started. Hi Astradicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astradict. The preparations for this night were successful. The sky over here is a little nicer than my normal backyard I must say. And maybe you can hear the rumbling and the noise in the back. A small creek runs by just a few, just maybe 20 meters away from me, so sleeping or camping in this garden could be very hard without earplugs, for me at least, but for this night it'll do. The target for tonight, I wasn't sure which galaxy to shoot, you know, galaxy season, March, April, the big season for the big telescopes, but not this night, because I've got the normal 714 refractor APO right now on the back of the HEQ5 taking five minute subs on the Whirlpool Galaxy. I did this target I think one year ago I shot a video on it but I wanted to revisit this galaxy because it looks amazing. I wasn't able to get anything good with the Richie Crescent telescope I still have some errors to work out with that one. The next big news in the last Two months I was saving some money to buy a new camera and this time of course not a DSLR for astronomy. It is a CMOS sensor camera but a dedicated astronomy camera. I've laid my eyes on the ZWO294MC Pro. So this camera thousand dollars even more with the all the attachments you can buy but I think it will definitely be worth it. By the end of April I should have a new dedicated astronomy camera, which I'm very excited because I think the issue with the new Richie Gretchen telescope, the DSLR just can't handle the long exposures. The aperture of the new telescope, it's an f9 and the APO is a f7. By calculation I had to extend my normal 5 minute subs to almost 7 minutes, which the DSLR can't handle in these uh, warm nights. It's just gonna catch on fire. <laughs> So, extremely, extremely excited to get the new cooled astronomy camera. 
Just imagine a minus 40 Celsius ice block hanging at the back of your telescope. Okay, let's see how the Whirlpool Galaxy is looking. Welcome back to APT. You see I'm on exposure 3 or 50. The dithering working nice on PhD. Every, every dither has finished so far. The histogram almost in the middle, I believe, that, that's looking quite nice. The blue is drawing, of course, due to the CLS filter. If I stretch it, you can see... Ooh, look at that, a galaxy. So let's magnify this one. Look at that. Maybe you can get you a better look at this one if I stretch the luminance. Ah, that, look, look, that looks better. So the luminance channel, of course, is very nice for the detail in galaxies. I'm considering buying a luminance filter to enhance my galaxy images, but that has to wait until the ZWO camera is here. And you see the also famous Whirlpool galaxy, one of the most famous galaxies in the night sky. Two galaxies colliding with each other, the small one over here always being ripped apart by the big one sucking in by gravity all the mass that the smaller one has. You can see it's very tiny. The PhD graph looks a bit wobbly right now. I think I should choose a different guide star and I don't think that it's gonna cause any troubles if I stop the guiding for a second. Set the exposure time to one second. Come on, be faster, camera. I'm picking a new guide star. Maybe I'm going, actually, I'm going to three seconds. I think I'm chasing the seeing of these stars right now. You know what I like most about living in Germany? Pretzels. Well, since I now have to spend probably the next five hours in here, maybe we can get a chance to talk a little bit to each other, I don't know. Usually I say a lot of stuff in these videos, but if you guys have something to say... The 1000 subscriber goal on this channel is approaching rapidly. We're now at 724, I believe, right, right now. Which is just amazing that so many people actually want to see the stuff I do. I guess I want to make a special Ant 1000, but I don't know exactly what yet. Maybe a Q&A video if you guys are interested in something. Or maybe um, give me some ideas maybe if what you would like to see. If I should do a special tutorial video on something like the last ones I did. Or, or just a normal default astrophotography backyard night. Which would be amazing because I love this hobby. But I like the idea of a Q&A video because maybe... It's a good chance to connect with you guys a little bit more, so give me some ideas and suggestions if you want to see something. The next thing I want to do right now, as you can see, I've got the wide angle 14mm Samyang lens right now. I want to capture some star trails, but not just any star trails. I've got my lens ball with me right here. Hang on. Uh, ah. I don't know if it will work. Star trails through lens ball. I tried it. I tried it once before with the bigger lens ball. I have the 13 centimeter one. I think I will try it with a small one now. But the bad thing is that out there you will not be able to see anything, and it must be dark for me to see the stars. So I'll be right back. So good. Well, the camera you just saw me through is now my trusty tripod pointing at my lens ball. I actually, I rammed this metal pole into the ground with the... Where is it? With the sledgehammer just a few feet away from the scope and it actually bumped my auto guiding, which I'm kind of proud of because <laughs> that just means how exact and precise my auto guiding is right now. I'm very happy about that. So I'm gonna turn the light down a bit. The camera is pointing at the lens ball. I'm gonna have the automatic shutter cable here. So 30 second exposures at ISO 
800 and I'm gonna do as many as I can. Let's see how these look. I'm gonna turn the light off, hang on. I'm only gonna use the red light so you can't see much right now, I'm sorry. I'm gonna press go, click and let's wait the 30 seconds. Okay, it's, it's not showing, hang on. I can't find the button in this darkness, damn it! Where's the button? Here it is. So I think this can look quite good, but I was shining my red headlamp into this, so... The next ones are gonna be better, but this looks great. Already... I'm afraid of how many airplanes I have to erase out of this, but I think this will be great. I think I actually fell in love with this thing. I, I think that most people look like criminals with these, but I think most criminals don't wear face shields with a picture of the Trifford Nebula. But it's now 11 p.m. I still have to wait for I think four hours, so see you guys tomorrow. Let's see if we get anything good out of the Whirlpool Galaxy. My name is Tim, I'm Astro Addict. I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.